It's not your fault. You've done nothing wrong. Do you hear me? It's not your, it's me, I've changed. I'm the one. We'll still be friends. I promise. I don't dislike the LSR 305s. They've done nothing wrong. They have legitimately done nothing wrong. But on my quest for different and better, just different and better, the Air Motive 5 fell into my lap. And by fell into my lap, I means I found them on sale and then bought them. So I bought the Air Motive 5s. They come here. I put them on this desk. I play them at substantial volume and go, wow, Emotiva must be an amplifier company. 50 watts for the tweeter, which is an AMT, air motion transducer, and 50 watts for the five and a quarter. 100 watts per speaker, two speakers. That's the same as having a 200 watt amplifier on your desk. That's more powerful already than that A500 could do with any speakers on this desk, except if I run it in bridge mono. I was so impressed by these five inch speakers and the imaging they did and the way, the low end they threw, that I put them out in the home theater, in the big room. I ran from my pre-outs on my Tascam receiver, which you probably won't have. If you have a receiver, it probably does not have pre-outs, you could check. I put them up on the stands and I listened and then I stopped listening, and then I bought the sixes. These speakers came here to convince me to buy the sixes. Now right now, if you were to buy these, they're 400 a pair. You buy these, they're 500 a pair. And that makes no goddamn sense to me. Because this is double the speaker. It's $100 more, but we're going from a five and a quarter to a six and a half. You're going from their small AMT to their large AMT. You're going from 13 pounds a speaker, which let me tell you something. That's a pretty legitimate bowling ball weight. You know what isn't a legitimate bowling ball weight? 24 and a quarter. These are 24 and a quarter pounds. Give me my rag. I've been touching them too much. And instead of 50 watt and 50 watt, we're looking at 100 watt and 110 watts per speaker. So if you buy this, this speaker, and you buy, an, you obviously got them in a pair, you got another one, you're now looking at 220, 220 watts. No. You're looking at 420 watts, oh my bad, math. Sitting on your desk. That is some gangster level of wattage. You know, rappers write about thousands of watts. Here you go. This is insane. Uh, 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 uh. Let's look at the backs of this one. A little tiny one. Tiny one. All right, it actually is smaller than the 305. Do you notice anything? See this gain knob? Yeah, this doesn't have one. RCA and XLR, this has TRS, which is the same as RCA with a different plug and XLR. This has input sensitivity, nothing here. This has high and low frequency trims, this says as well. But there's no gain knob. Neither one has a gain knob. Emotiva expects you to be using a preamp to control this. They sell the Control Freak here. Which right now, as of the taping of this, is only available in XLR, which I happen to have an XLR source, so it works fine. But if you don't have an XLR source, you need something else. You need a shit sys. Or, in this case, I'm using right now... Micah Origen. Right there, pre-outs. So you unplug your headphones, or you get the new Origin Plus, you can flip between headphones and that. I leave it on low gain. And it kills everyone. 
kill everyone. The shelving EQ here, you could lower the high frequencies by negative two or raise them by, ne by plus two. And the bass only goes from correct to down two, down four. That's your options. That's the whole, or on and off. So that's it. You're out of options. That's the simplicity of these. Now they are heavy. Like I said, this is 13 solid pounds. Uh, comes with a foam sheet on the bottom. This has two mounting holes. It's the same on that, which should have stretched this morning. There you go. Big sheet of foam, no mounting holes. This is way too heavy for a wall mount. Do not attempt it. Do not even think for a second a cheap speaker stand will hold this. My doom stacks in there with the with the extruded aluminum that will hold them just fine, but those no. Pretty sure the uh, DR Pros will hold them, but these are massive. There's I don't understand why anyone would buy the fives over the sixes right now at this price point. Four hundred dollars, five hundred dollars, hundred and ten watts, two hundred and I'm sorry, a hundred watts. 210 watts, 13 pounds, 24 pounds. They both work on a desk. They're both studio, see, deep down, they're both studio monitors. When I bought these for the home theater, which is where they legitimately go, that is their home. These six and a half inch air motive sixes belong in my living room. When I'm not testing SVS Ultras or Burchart, you know, Swedish speakers or JBL Studio, when they're not being tested, these go there. I have the ability to put powered monitors as my front shuttles. It's a rare thing. Usually you have to get a processor or an old receiver to do it. But my receiver can do it. And I do. Because this means I have more power in the front end of my home theater than most people have. I have 210 watts and 130 watt self-powered sub per channel. Do math. Do math. That's like 300 and... There is a lot, a lot per side. Let's talk about sound, all right? Sound over the 305, because that's all you're here to see is, well, what about the 305? What about it? What about it? It does nothing wrong. But how's the bass? Oh, the bass is better on this. Well, how's the treble? What about the tweeter there? Oh, the tweeter in that is amazing. The waveguide brings the music to life. This one isn't shabby. And by isn't shabby, I mean, it does very, very similar to what that tweeter does, but it's an AMT. So it could reach up just that little bit more that you can't get out of that. These are just an extended amazing. Just extended the amazing. They both work on desk. They both work right here. I could swap that out for the six or that out for the five and be perfectly happy. Their simplicity is just plug in, turn on. The back plates do get hot. They're not as efficient as the 305s. That's how you know that Emotiva is an amplifier company first, because the amplifiers in this are legit. It's just an Emotiva amp built into the back of the speaker. You get either a flared oval port or a straight slot. Volume is insane on both. This could almost do my home theater. It's that close. But I'm a crazy motherfucker. And I wanted more. And here is more. You're looking at more. Now there's one speaker bigger than this. It's the Stealth 6. The Stealth 8, I'm sorry. And those go... Instead of being... Is that a pair? That can't be a pair. It's got to be each. Why does it say two? Price is for one monitor, not sold in pairs. Okay. So you go 400 pair, 500 pair, 750 each. That's got to be insane. You wonder how much power it's got? 200 and 200 that's 400 per speaker that thing is just I wouldn't even I don't even know where even to have Babies inside of that. It doesn't even make sense 
Let's stick to what we know. Let's stick to fives and sixes. There is a four. I haven't heard the four. I've heard the three. There's a little baby three inch. So it's adorable. It's like a Bluetooth. It's sort of a gimmick. The four I'd like to hear, although I'm not willing to buy another set. The fives are right here. I take them over the 305s just for build quality and volume potential. And then the sixes exist. Which, if you've got a big room, you know, these are the same cost right now as the Vanatu T1s. I love the Vanatu T1s. I love them. But they have that limit. That volume limit. And you can get the quality. It's just the tweeted images and the low end really surprises you for the size. The low end almost doesn't surprise me for the size of these. Or the weight of them. Because look at the fucking size of them. There's my speaker stand that holds every speaker. It doesn't even like calculate on top of this. Who buys these? Anyone. College students who want to uh, get kicked out of college by the sixes. You can get away with the fives. There's nothing wrong with the fives. At this price point though, it's like, why? Why would I say? You're not talking about like a $300 to a $500. The legitimate cost difference should be $250, $500, and then you could pick one. $400, $500 is just like, okay, there you go. You've chosen. Thank you, math. Math has chosen this for me. You're getting double the speaker, double the wattage, double the weight, and it works. It works here. It's a powered monitor. It's a studio monitor. It's designed for up close and personal. And then you walk away from that and it's still insane. That's what blew me away with these is that I was able to put them in my home theater and just be like, Fuck, the imaging between the, the drivers. Then that maximum volume potential. I've outrun the, su the subwoofers with these easily. Easily outrun my subwoofers. Like I said, they do run a little warm in the back because they're not Class D. That's a Class D. That's definitely a Class D. Those things don't even get warm. These need massive heat sinks. I, I don't know what else to tell you about, about these monsters. Why do I run them upside down on my desk? Hold on. Uh. <clears throat> well, you see, when you're sitting here and you listen to music... You are absolutely free of charge to rotate your speakers upside down. If I had those the right way up, that's where I hear vocals that come from like right around there. If I turn them upside down, that jacks them down to here. I know that sounds weird because it doesn't line up, but I just need to bring the vocals down. That's why they run upside down. Feel free to flip your 305s, anything you got upside down. If you're running them on a wedge stands like this, which by the way, this is a piece that I found again for yoga and then just cut it in half with a kitchen knife. Because it was like $10. That works great too. You can run them right side up, upside down. Doesn't make a damn bit of difference to me. Try it. It's free to try. Get a Micro Origin Plus so you could plug in the headphones and flip the switch for headphones or monitors. And just, just, just be happy. This is literally the heaviest speaker setup I've ever listened to. The, the only thing heavier than this are the PSAs. For sheer weight and amplification and volume, nothing beats these. Except for the PSAs. But those are those don't have bass. So these are a full these are a more complete speaker than the PSAs were. How do they compare to the ultras? Ultra still went out just a bit, just a little fucking bit. The tweeter and the ultra just did something tonally but ultras don't exist take these 530s don't exist take these hell i might take these over the 530s and that's hard to say don't make me choose on camera that's the worst worst day of my life my only concern my only hatred is is this blue see this blue led that's cooking the fucking lens of the camera right now it's you see there, it's just dull purple. Tail light repair tape. You buy it at the hardware, at a automotive store. You take a strip, you don't have to get it this wide, you cut it up into little squares, and you just stick it on there. And then you're done. Then you have a nice dull blue LED. I like the JBL's white, it's different. 
But that fucking blue emotiva, oh god. The one thing I did have is an issue with one of these sixes where it was making noise and I had to call the company. And I've never had a, as good a customer service experience as I did with them. Because first of all, you call Tennessee, not Indonesia. You talk to a man named Charles, who's actually named Charles, or whoever his name was. He walks you through things. He gets you set up with RMAs. He asks you questions. He calls you back when things are ready. That's awesome. You think if I called the JBL, I would get anybody? Anybody? Ever. No, 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 no. Emotiva gives a shit. They have to. They're new, relatively speaking. They have to answer that phone call. They have to be there for you. And then on top of that, they got a new line of speakers coming out. Passives. Guess what they're not going to have? Blue LEDs. They're going to use a smaller, this tweeter, and it's going to be for home theater. And I have to co contact them at some point and be like, look, give me everything you've got. I want to try it all. And hopefully they do. Because I think you guys are going to be shopping around right around that time. They're going to be competing with the new Unify Elax. They're going to be competing with the JBL Studio 230s. They're ready to start taking over the world. They've already, there is an Emotiva amp in almost every home theater forum on earth. You'll see somebody with running the blue LEDs. I hate blue LEDs. I fucking hate blue LEDs. But blue LEDs aside, they're not screwing around. These don't screw around. These don't screw around. That thing doesn't screw around. Even this thing doesn't screw around. Ooh. Sound demo. Coming for us all. Amen.